What up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. I am on the Thompson's Trail, making my way to Beecher Ridge. The Albus man and I are gonna camp there tonight. He knows I'm talking about him, so he's actually going faster. Why are you going faster, buddy? Look at that man go. He really doesn't like walking in mud, water, and snow, and that's what this entire trail is a mixture of. Mud, snow, and because it's 49 degrees out Fahrenheit, it's certainly unfrozen and nasty and water and mud everywhere, but it also makes it easier traction. So it takes us about 90 minutes to get up to Beecher Ridge, like well, the falls, and then another 30 minutes to walk around. And once you get to Beecher Ridge, I gotta remember exactly where I went off trail to find my missing tarp snap. We'll see if I can find it. And uh, I walk a little slow because of this guy. I've also got 35 pounds of gear on my back because I got two sleeping pads plus this guy's stuff. And because stuff like this, I have to carry him over using that little handle. He's uh, got willpower like me, but he's certainly not parkour man. You know what I'm saying? So I tried his shoes, all four of them for the first time. He struggled. A, it's hard to get the feet in. B, they're not very high, so they strap very low and easy to come off. And C, when he climbs up ledges, because he's not used to the extra size of his foot, you know, it's only an inch or so, half an inch, it gets, gets caught on like the ledges, and it just knocks right off. So he literally sat down in the snow. He's like, dude, I don't like these. And they kept falling off, so we're gonna try again later. And then we'll have kind of no choice tomorrow when it's snowy. This side doesn't have a lot of snow because the sun hits the direct side and it sets over there. Where we came in, there's not a lot of sunlight. So what's gonna happen is that once we get to the mountainside, it might not have a lot, but I think Beecher Ridge might. We'll see. Anything good, Albus? Any gummy bears? No? Bummer. I'm curious if he remembers which way to go at the trail marker. Let's find out. I'll give him some leeway. Let's see if he knows. So last time, he went dead right. This time, he went the right way. We're going left. Let's go. Next to the stream down there, which falls from the waterfalls up there. So you'll be able to hear it pretty loud here in a bit. There you go, you can see it down there already. So gorgeous out here. Slight breeze, but I'm warm from walking. Albus is like, I want some of that water. Not quite, buddy. Another mile, then you can have one. Now, I'm not allowed to set up camp within about 10 yards of the trail, so 30 feet or 20 yards, I think, of the stream. So, there are places where they have designated camps near it, though, which is kind of nice. All right, so this little water is probably maybe a foot across, and this pansy won't jump because he's afraid to get his feet wet. So, I'm going to carry him across. You ready, buddy? Thank God this dog comes with a handle. He's like, no, come back. No, 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 no. He thinks I'm gonna shove him in the water. I'm not gonna shove you in the water. I'm gonna lift you across. 35 pounds, plus this 20 pound dog, 25 pound dog, whatever. Nothing can go wrong. Okay, so this is the first stream crossing. It's where I have to Balance my pack and Al was getting across. And he usually gets his first water break here. I can't drink this. There's bacteria. But uh, I'll get some when we get to the top of the falls. I'm good. We're gonna go around here and then let Home Slice have a drink. I always like to cross at these logs up here. The trail's right there, but there's actually an easier way over here. With the logs. All right, follow me, Alvis. We'll get across. Right here. Yeah. This is much better. Mo better. Mo better. Okay. 
All right, buddy, you earned it. You want some? You want some water? You want some water? Go for it, man. Get some water. Get some water. You do get your water. He's like, woot! This rocks the mic. My pack. I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but it has this little gap with this mesh plastic. And it creates a gap, so when your back sweats a lot, you can have like an air pocket, right? So you don't sweat too much and it cools off. If you arch your back and aim it at the right angle of the wind, it's freezing because your back is sweating, even though I can feel the claws of cold. <sighs> Coming at just, just all I have is a Under Armour polyester shirt on, you know, one of those workout shirts. But then you hear that water and you just like, uh, do I care if I'm hot? Do I care if my code base has technical debt? No, not really. By the way, he's still drinking. <laughs> where, where does it all fit? He like never pees, it's confusing. Anyway, that's where we're crossing. So as soon as he's done drinking, we'll get him across. Carry his butt. So this part goes up the mountain slowly, then takes a right and it crisscrosses maybe about eight times. So, you know, you're not going straight up the mountain, but man, I, I take like 10 steps and I take a rest. I take 10 steps and I take a rest. It's like the video game, you know, where like your stamina bar is really low and you gotta like wait. Very similar to, uh, what is it, Death, Death Stranding? Where Norman Reedus is the main character. And he carries this stuff and when he's crossing the water, his uh, stuff gets, what is it, really um, low and like you could fall in the water and lose all your gear. And I mean, you can swim, you can go get it, but it's, it's the worst, it's not very good. So here, there's no balance problems, but man, getting up that mountain is tough. And then once you get to the top of the falls, and you see the campsite in this beautiful view, then you gotta go another eh, 300 feet, 500 feet on this rocky terrain to get to the top to get your water. And it's so worth it, it's so beautiful. But I didn't know there was this much snow cover. It's just crazy. So I'm sure it's gonna look gorgeous up there, but we'll see. So yeah, rocky terrain, mixes snow, but his feet, his feet are doing okay. I got the, the bomb you can wipe on his feet to make it feel better, but we'll see. What, what, what are you doing? It's a good thing we didn't just get you a bath. Good Lord. Feel better? Refreshed? No? Need some more? Okay. You know, I'm not gonna do that too, right? Like, that's the word I'm looking for. Heck no. You are a gooseball. Are you sure you're not from Minnesota? <laughs> you do not belong in the south, homie. All right, I think it's over this little path here is where we'll take a break. There's a log that I can normally cross by myself. I could probably do it with Albus, but there's also two logs on the right. But there's a lot of rocks, so this is a good place to take a rest. And if if you're not sure you can make it up the mountain or it's kind of late in the day, I made the mistake of not getting water here. I should have, because I had to get it in the dark in the waterfall, which is super dangerous. So if you're going up Beach Ridge, we're going up to the falls from the Overland Trailway, this is definitely ugh, a good place to stop. All right, I was. All right, so that's Beach Ridge up there. The stream right in the middle of those cops of trees right there goes up up the mountain and forms a series of small falls called Overland Falls, I think. But you get up there via that. So it doesn't look steep, but that trail goes left and then zigzags all the way up that miserable, miserable hill. So Albus, you ready? He's like, yeah, man. One good thing about the pandemic is that I'm out of shape. One wheel and these once a week hikes don't really count. 
to cardio. But this hill feels like it could last a, a month. <laughs> a month <laughs> with the cardio. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's hard. Uh, but so is Haskell. I can do this mountain. Category three, not so much. Halfway up the mountain now, but literally, while I was walking up a zigzag, he would turn around and start walking down. Didn't even look at me. At first I was like, oh, he just doesn't know where he's going, but he was tired of climbing the mountain. We weren't even halfway up. But now we're at the old campsite and he's good. He's, he's in his happy place with snow. And the, you know, the view from here is just ungodly gorgeous. I can't hear the waterfall. It's usually, what is it, like 20, I'm sorry, 200 yards that way. There's a sign that says you're not allowed to, you know, camp near it in that, that area. So you can hear the whoosh, but I think it's so cold up here. It's 43 down there. Let's see what the temperature is. Let me see what the temperature is. Uh, temperature is at yeah, 44. It's about the same up here as it was down there. So it might just be frozen. So a lot of it's not going very far, but I'm gonna give home slice a break and then uh, get some water next to the waterfall. See if I can find my favorite spot. I probably have like maybe two hours of daylight left. We'll see. Beautiful, huh, Abbas? Yeah, man. Gorgeous view. That is for show. Sure. All right, let's keep going. These stone stairs. Abbas is like, hell no. I understand, buddy. It's cold. It's hard. All right, it's 3.05 p.m. on Saturday. It's about 41 degrees. Albus, man, is pooped. He is tired. He was letting me drag him. He was so tired in the snow. So I'm gonna hop over that log, grab some water for us. And then we've got maybe an hour and a half to get to camp. It usually only takes about 45 minutes. But he's gonna hate the last trek. It's, a, it's only about 100 yards up a hill, but he's exhausted. I don't bring water. I like to give myself incentive to get it from a mountain stream. And there's two places to get it, but I like the top of the falls. You would think it'd be better at the bottom of the falls where it's kind of filtered, but uh, it, what you want is the water that's moving, right? Not the water that's kind of stagnant like that. And then what you do is you get it into a dirty bag like this, and then it goes through this filter through gravity, pulls it through, and then it goes in a clean bag. And then you can take the clean bag and make it go back. So you actually put the clean bag on top and the dirty bag on bottom, and you can get extra silt and dirt, and it'll get like 99, 100% of the bacteria, but I boil it anyway for about an hour. It won't get viruses, but I boil it for about a minute. If you're at like really high elevations, you need to do three, but I'm not that high. And so I'll, I'll probably, you know, switch it once and then uh, boil it. And it's just, it's so good. Like it, it tastes like raw mountain stream, you know, ideal that you'd get from like the bottles, like mountain stream, right? Like it really tastes that good, it's so good. I, I met somebody once from Poland, I think, and his name was Seabor, and he refused to drink American water, and now I know why, because I've had a taste of just, you know, mountain water. I can't imagine what the pure stuff out there tastes like, so. Anyway, it's a really, really neat invention, and you got some nice clean water. You can make coffee, dehydrated food, or just drink. It's cool. Now, the dog doesn't have to, but he likes it, so whatever. Albus has had his 20-minute rest as I filtered the water the wrong direction and did not want to get up. He was almost falling asleep on the snow. But as you can see, the sun's reasonably high, so probably got about an hour to get to camp. It should only take 30 minutes to get there, which gives me hopefully plenty of time to not only set up camp, but also see if I can find my lost snap for my Eno housefly. I, I'm supposed to have four, and I only have three. I know it's here. I just gotta find it. Hopefully there's not too much snow, but I know those two trees, so we'll see. So this is interesting. This stream 
is where they actually originally recommend you get water, not back there at the top of the falls, which is only like, I don't know, 200 yards behind me. But it's not as flowing as fast. And it, you know, it goes across the trail. I don't think this is a horse trail, so I think you're okay with, you know, horse dung and stuff, but <laughs> I don't want to get water from there. <laughs> it's, it's not, last time it was kind of frozen, now it's like completely frozen. It's the snow leakage. That's pretty funny. It was impossible to get this guy up the hill, but he did good. He, he kept walking down or just would lie down. It was miserable, but I actually found it. I found the spot. Like, this is where I camped last time. It's the only flat piece of ground here. That boulder right there that I slammed down to cover the, the raccoon poo so I could sleep and not between these two trees right here. So there's like a, a tree there, right there, and then that tree right there. And I could tie my, my tarp to it and then sleep on the ground right there. And these two, you know, branches actually added a little bit of insulation when you had the the tarp down. So anyway, I mean, look at that view. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to, I think I've only got like 30 minutes until sunset. It's impossible to see the sun. So I'm going to see if I can set up the hammock and tarp real quick and then try to do a picture. But somebody's tired. I'm going to give him a greenie. I'll make him feel better. This deer thinks we have food. Albus doesn't see it yet. He doesn't have a leash. I want to get his leash on, so when this deer decides to show himself to Albus. I made it to camp, almost everything's set up. I still got to pull the water. I'm a little nervous about the filtering. Might have been backwards. I did it twice, but now I'm paranoid because the clean bag got infected, so I'm just going to boil my, all the water before I even drink it. But yeah, I got the, the bear bag right there. A lot of these trees are widow makers, so I got to be careful. In fact, my hammock's actually on. Uh, a tree that's alive, but the the branch, as you can see, is dangling over there. So I think I'll be okay, but um, I don't want to use that. So Albus, after he got his water, decided to go back on the snow. I think he's confused because usually when I set up the tent, he immediately goes in. He's like, "Dude, this is amazing!" And now it's like, "Wait a minute!" It's like I, the tarp, it's a house fly, so it kind of looks like a tent, but not really. So he's a little confused. Um, so yeah, I got the doors open here. He's staying on my pad, but I'm gonna lower the tarp. I just made it six feet so I could walk in. But as soon as I um, get done putting everything together, I'll lower it. That way in the morning, I can make sure that just in case there's wind, there's not supposed to be, I think it's only four miles an hour, so I'll be okay. Um, but I gotta put his stuff up. I gotta put the food over there by the food bags. I'm just, Waiting for my water to cool down. I boiled some of it. and uh, But yeah, great view, man. I think it's sunsetting now. It's just hard to see. So it's there. And look at that. He stole my bag. It was deflating or inflating itself, self-inflating. Why doesn't he sit on the one I gave him? What the heck? My feet, I think, got wet from the snow. So I'm warm. But my feet are freezing to death. That's okay. I got a spare pair of socks. Um, but look at that un- Unbelievable sky. I mean, it's just purple and pinking. And what it does is it reflects the pink back. So, like, if you look around, it gives this weird pinkish tone and everything. It's gorgeous. I believe. Found my strap, by the way. Mission accomplished. It was right over where I set up originally and then moved. There's Albus, man. He decided to go off the snow again. So I got vegetarian chili. It's pretty good. And Albus, who's scared out of his mind, his bed's like five feet away, but he's scared of the uh, dark. So he's sitting with me. He likes sitting on the snow. He's weird. But yeah, it's pretty good. I should have gotten the beef carnivore version, but I just, I wanted to try it, and it turned out to be vegetarian, which is an accident. It wasn't intentional, but 
it's okay. It's pretty good. And all I've had today was like, I think, sausage biscuit and maybe some hash browns. So not a lot of food, not very healthy, but this is, this is pretty good. There's only one piece that's like reasonably not hydrated. So we'll definitely be buying this brand again. You can get them both at Cabela's, I think, and REI as well. This is the vegetarian chili. Pretty good. So I'm going to finish this, put this trash in the trash bag, put that in the bear bag, put all my other food, which is already there. I've already set everything up. And then I'm going to get changed and go to bed. See if I can rearrange Albus to be right under me in the hammock, just so I, I can reach out at night and see if he's there and if he's worried. Um, I'm wondering if I could somehow latch the leash to me in the hammock, but for now I'll just put it next to the tree that we're on. So it'll be fun. He's super warm. This winter gear he's got is overqualified for what this guy brings with his natural winter coat. So peace out. I'm comfy and warm. I'm using a sleeping pad since I don't have an underquilt yet. And now this man is right below me I'm on his pad in a sleeping bag, so we're good. We're warm. I didn't expect it to like collect. There's the bear bag. I didn't expect it to collect like <laughs> in that mound right there. And I only have shoes, so my socks are gonna get wet, but I have a spare pair. It should be okay. Albus Ben is forging his own path through the forest, the snow forest. Cool thing about trail runners is their shoes. They're not boots, so snow gets in your socks, and when you freeze, you lose your toes. So, as a programmer, I don't need my toes, but I'd like to have my toes for like parkour and one wheel, you know? But this guy, he's made for this. Oh, gotta lift him over the thing. So, Albus and I take turns because if I make small footprints walking slow, then he doesn't have to work as hard. He can follow my tracks. I don't have snowshoes, but at least he can, whoa. See, he can walk behind me. It's not as hard for him, even though he likes to lead, especially downhill, which is what we're on now. It's only about four miles, and then there's a nasty uphill after the stream. There's a bunch of streams that kind of coalesce together at the bottom here. It's really nice to come here in the summer because you can have a bunch of swim spots and there's a small camping site next to the streams, which is, it's mostly flat and long, so it's good for a group. And you're not supposed to do fires, but I've seen them have fire pits there. So, whew, even with tread, I'm slipping. All right, whew. okay. Lots of, lots of stone steps the rangers make. I should probably pay attention. Giving him a break so we can go through the pine forest. Oh gosh.
he had so many snowballs on his legs, he was miserable walking and he would just stop. And he didn't need a rest, he just didn't like it. I'd knock him off my glove, but some were, you know, so ice balls I couldn't. So eventually at the trailhead, I just took a break, took out my knife and cut him off. I didn't get all of them on his chest because it's too hard to see. He's a fluff ball, I don't want to hurt him. But it's got a serrated edge so I can cut him all off. And now he is going to the edge of the leash. He's so excited. I'm sure I'm going to keep up. Now I got to carry his stuff too. I just want to point that out. So it's not bad. It's just uh, hard to keep up with him now. For the majority of this trip, he's struggling to keep up with me. It's also downhill. He likes downhills. And I, he probably can hear the water even though I can't. So this is the campsite that's literally right next to the river. You just take a right on Overland Trail instead of going left up the mountain to Feature Ridge and Overland Falls and all that. It's nice. I don't know who's setting up fires. Like you're not supposed to do that, but it's like literally right next to the trail and the river, so or stream. So it's just nice because it's reasonably flat in some places. It's, it's still got, you know, some of an incline, but if you're a hammock camper, it's good. So, I miss breakfast. He's already had water and breakfast, but I, I just had coffee, so I need to have some biscuits and pork sausage gravy. Oh, yeah! 